Hello.
Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Let's give people a couple of minutes to join here. I don't want to wait too long because it seems we have a pretty packed agenda today. Posting the link as always. So yeah, agenda-wise for today, we have three main topics. Update from the operator working group, especially on the white paper around operators. Uh, Cornelia, I also reserve one slot for the GitOps uh, working group in case you want to share something. Obviously, there's the, the voting that's going on that uh, we posted on, on the mailing list. Yep. And then we have the Argo project update presentation for, for today. Um, I think we should be fine. Timing wise, uh, given that uh, it will be about 20 minutes. Just want to have people some more time to join. Yeah, well, while we're waiting here, if this is your first time ever joining and you want to quickly introduce yourself, feel free to do so while we're waiting for others to join the event about five minutes after. I know that some people are new here, so I'd like to give them the opportunity to just say hello to the rest. Yep. I'm, this is my first time going to one of these meetings. Uh, my name is Matt Clark, and I'm a senior engineer in Spotify. Um, in the deployments team. Uh, so we manage all our deployments infrastructure tools and um, yeah, nice to be here. Yeah, I'm uh, the one, I work at Red Hat in the OpenShield GitOps team uh, and we use our Argo CD open source project and uh, excited to be here. Hi, um, I'm Regina. Uh, I'm, I work at Red Hat also uh, with Dewan too. Um, we use Argo CD, so here to watch their pitch. So thanks, nice to be here. Yeah, I'm John Pittman. I also work at Red Hat on the uh, GitOps uh, project. Uh, and yeah, I'm glad to be here as well. Yeah, I'm very good. I am in Intuit working in the All right, it's five minutes past the hour, so let's get started here. Um, first up, um, let's start with a quick update from the operator working group. I think you have some exciting news to share today. Okay, yes, um, so let's start. Um, just let me share my screen. Okay, so um, can anybody hear me? Hopefully, yes. Um, perfect. So, um, yes, we have exciting news. So, we are about to uh, to get our first draft done. So, um, currently, the last uh, pull requests are getting into our repository. We are currently reviewing everything. And, um, yes, um, what did we want to achieve with our, with our um, white paper? So, um, the reader should get an idea what an operator is. 
Um, we wanted to find use cases for an operator. So as an end user, um, we wanted to describe what an operator could do for an end user. So which tasks could an operator um, fulfill and yes, how, how could he uh, be supported by this? But also for a developer, which things could I provide with an operator? So which capabilities could an operator have? Um, and um, yes, um, to, get an, to get really an idea what an operator can provide for, for anyone. We also wanted to create some awareness for the security of operators. So um, there were such things which uh, were already defined by the, by the security working uh, a special interest group in their white paper. But we also tried to describe um, what, what would an operate, uh, what should, uh, what, what measures could an, could an op a developer, an operator take, or what should he mind of uh, when he writes an operator? And also what can I as a user um, check to see if a, if a possible uh, if an operator is secure enough for me or what should I which I should I take care of additionally we want we, uh, we wanted to get an idea which possibilities and capabilities an operator could have we wanted to identify some best practices there were lots of, of white papers for this and so on we wanted to describe something and give some examples for that. We also tried to get an overview about some, some frameworks. So we reached out to the different communities and um, asked them to write, to write a description of their, of their framework. And uh, last but not least, we wanted to um, give the reader additional, additional information where uh, where he can find um, further reading about operators. So how will this, will the table of content look like? So we'll have an executive summary, um, not, not really surprising, um, which will be finished after the, after the comment period. Um, we have some foundation topics. So we described what an operator is, um, how a design how the design pattern not only for kubernetes control uh, operators could look like and we also described the design pattern on the on an example of kubernetes control uh, uh, of, of kubernetes then we described some capabilities so there were some capabilities which are pretty obvious such as installing and upgrading in some points we have such things as um, auto remediation and what what you can think of but we didn't want to use the capability model which is uh, sorry the, the maturity model which is currently uh, more or less the standard for this. We wanted to get more in a capability-based way to not say that an operator which has a kind of a capability is more mature than another one because this must not be the case. Um, yes, then we described some, some uh, the security and risks as I said before. Um, in this place, um, I want to thank the SIG security if someone is there because they wrote it. Afterwards, we described some kind of uh, operator framework. So currently I think we have the cube builder, we have the operator framework, we have the meter controller. And I think we have kind of COPF there. Um, so if someone knows someone from another, from another operator project, please. Everyone's everyone is invited to describe the operator framework there. Um, yes, we tried to add some use cases such as um, we had we had uh, we had one use case for GitOps, for example, because that uh, this could also be a task of an operator. But we also have a simple use case on on top of the of the Prometheus operator. And we are, all, we are also trying to find some additional use cases until the final publishing. 
we define some best practices, um, but we also get this from the from the current liter literature. And at least, last but not least, we summarized up and yes, this was it more or less. So um, we had some related work because there is a lot of, of further reading about operators. Um, and last but not least, we have the country, uh, we, we spent the section for the contributors so that everybody gets the credit he, he deserves. Um, yes, but um, now it's your turn. So um, currently, uh, af after all pull requests are there and um, accepted, which will be most probably tomorrow, we will open one PR with a with a really large document, which will include all of the all of the sections, and then um, we hope that every one of you reads this document. And if um, you have some con comments, suggestions, or something which is not really in the document at the moment, um, feel free to um, open a PR, make comments, or suggest something on the on this uh, pull request. Um, if there's something to change, we will coordinate this with our origin authors. And uh, if if these are really, really simple changes, we'll make the changes by ourselves. And um, the color, this review phase will end on the 1st April, and this is no joke. Um, so uh, yes, and afterward, after this color uh, review, we will write the executive summary, round this, round this up, and try to get this published. So yes, this was our update. Um, are there any questions, comments, and so on from your side? So can you send it out to the mailing list once you've done the merging? Yes. So we will do the. We will um, send it out in the mailing list. We will send it out on Slack, on Twitter, and wherever. So um, we want to get as many comments as possible from as many people as possible. And, and just for to, to avoid confusion here, so you're merging it into one document, meaning you're leaving it on GitHub, right? That in we will do this on GitHub, yes. Um, okay, good. Looking forward to it. So um, we have something with the wider audience to share. Then I would now pass over to the GitOps working group. Cool. Well, that is a hard act to follow. I do not have a grand announcement of like principles document being published or anything like that, but I will give you, sorry, the sun just came through my window. Um, I will give you a, an update. We have been busy nonetheless. Um, so one of the main things that we're working on, one of the first things we're working on in the GitOps working group is the GitOps principles document. Um, this is in the past, we might have referred to this as the GitOps manifesto. Um, uh, that is a bit too, uh, not quite the right word. So at the moment, we're using the concept of GitOps principles. We have moved that for those of you who might um, not have been paying, you know, been tracking it very, very closely. We started out with that in a Google doc. We have moved that over into GitHub. So there's a PR where there's some discussion happening um, we are also uh, scheduling some synchronous sessions uh, with the um, to work on the principles document. So there's, of course, a lot of value in doing things from an asynchronous perspective. Um, but then there's also you can push things forward more quickly with the synchronous. We will, of course, record those sessions and uh, reflect anything that's done in the synchronous sessions will be reflected back into the Git repository for those of you who cannot participate. Um, uh, so you, that's one of the work could, streams. Yes. Could you get them on the um, CMTF calendar? Because it might be easier for people to join. That's a good idea. Amy. Yep. I mean, the GitOps calendar is not like super, super full, but that might help also for us the security there. Yep, making a note. Um, and they are, for those of you, uh, you know, until we have something in the calendar, you can find those things um, discussed in the Slack channel. So um, do take a look at the Slack channel and you can find out when you can join those things. 
Um, I do not have at this point a, um, a, a set of milestones, so I cannot tell you. I mean, we are, I can give you an order of magnitude. We are not looking to publish the principles a year from now. We're looking to publish them closer to a month from now. Um, and then of course, iterate on them. So uh, whether it ends up being a month or two months, I don't know yet. Um, and we will see about maybe getting a, a calendar. I'm inspired um, by what you just did, Thomas, uh, in describing um, the schedule for your the white paper. Um, the second work stream that we're working on is a website work stream. So to really start to kind of articulate and gather you know, links and things like that. That's been a little bit slow getting going, but we do have a number of individuals who have volunteered for that work stream. The newer work stream since uh, two weeks ago is that the GitOps working group is going to be putting on a zero day event at KubeCon, um, the, the upcoming KubeCon in May, I think it is. Um, and uh, that is, we're doing a GitOps con. Um, it is being co-sponsored by Red Hat and Weaveworks simply from the mechanics perspective. So Red Hat is in fact going to be providing all of the infrastructure for the streaming and you know the platform for putting on the event um, and uh, is working together with Weaveworks on kind of putting together the materials from a marketing perspective and so on. Um, and then in terms of the, the event itself, that is very much going to be run by the uh, uh, GitOps working group. We have about three people who have volunteered to help with that. Um, we are putting together a, a schedule where we are um, going to be issuing a call for papers. I think that's going out today or maybe already did. Um, we will have about three weeks of allowing folks to provide their submissions to that. Then we'll have about a week of selecting from those submissions. Um, so you can see that it's very much a community event. The selection is going to be done by that work stream that's selecting the, uh, the talks for that. We're aiming for about a four or five hour event, including some social time and kind of hallway. We'll do our best to have a bit of a hallway um, uh, track within that. Um, and uh, then we'll of course publish the uh, the schedule, and it will be I we I believe we're not going to be charging anything for this. So anybody who wants to participate can sign up through their um, KubeCon registration. So it it I don't know if it's already there, but they should be showing up as the list of zero day events that you can sign up for. Um, and then finally, uh, you mentioned Eloise when we first came on that some of you may have noticed if you're paying attention to the uh, um, mailing list for the SIG app delivery is that we are in the process of electing co-chairs for the GitOps working group. We've been doing all of this by bootstrapping just like any, you know, any volunteers, but we do want people to sign up and say, yep, I'm willing to invest the time to keep everything moving forward. Um, and uh, get involved in some of the work streams. It doesn't mean that the co-chairs do all of the work, um, but we do want the co-chairs to have enough domain knowledge to be able to help coordinate the different work streams, keep things moving forward and those types of things. Um, that the nominations for the co-chairs closes at midnight Friday night, um, so 11.59 p.m. Friday night. Then we'll have a one week voting period and then we will um, announce the co-chairs. So that's our update. That is actually a lot going on there, it's great. So I, I saw that two people already um, wrote back on the, the co-chairs. Like what we also try to generally do now more, especially in the app delivery, but overall, hopefully we also find some end users um, of people from end user companies, obviously, uh, to join in as well. So maybe strongly encourage uh, somebody there to also participate. Yeah. Good point. Um, you know, obviously, always it depends on the people who want to step up. Uh, yep. Really yep. Well. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Oh. That's great. And that's a lot going on, actually. A lot of good stuff. Indeed. And okay, then let's all pass over to Argo. Let me see here. Uh, 
There, hopefully that should be coming through there in a second. Give me a, <clears throat> give me a thumbs up if you see the see my screen. Perfect. Can see it. Perfect. Uh, thanks, everyone. Um, so, hi everyone. My name is Henry Blixt. I'm a product manager at uh, Intuit. I was going to give a uh, fairly quick update on where we're uh, at with uh, with the graduation that we filed for uh, the PR. I think was filed. Uh, submitted a few weeks ago now. I just want to give a shout out to, to all the contributors and, and users and vendors that have helped get us to this point. I saw that there were some that joined the call as well. So thanks for being here today. Um, and, and thanks for all the hard work you do for, for Argo. Let's see. So just a, uh, Argo has been around now for a while, but I wanted to take you know, a, a a minute or so just to give a quick, quick uh, overview of, of where we're at and, and where we've been so far. So as, as you probably know, Argo is a set of, of Kubernetes, Kubernetes tools for running and managing jobs and applications. Uh, each of these tools can be run independently, but as these tools mature uh, and we see users have use cases that that, that kind of bridge the, the gaps between them. We see more and more users um, picking up more of, of the projects. And we're also working on getting them more closely integrated so that the users that do use more than one can get um, additional benefits of, of running all these together. So during incubation, uh, there, there was some discussions on the number of projects in Argo. Um, during incubation, uh, we settled on, on these four Argo workflows, our container native workflow engine, uh, Argo CD, the declarative GitOps continuous delivery tool, Argo rollouts or declarative progressive, progressive delivery, which is commonly used together with Argo CD to do more sophisticated strategy. And then lastly, Argo events. Um, so uh, during incubation, like I said, these, these were the four projects that were included in Argo. Um, and that there was a decision made during incubation that we shouldn't expand these. So now when we're marching towards graduation, we're still sticking, sticking with, with these four, four here. Uh, workflow and CD uh, are the ones that have seen the most uh, growth and contributions. We'll see that a little bit later. And uh, there are also the oldest, uh, oldest of the four. So I look quickly just on the history before I go into more data on, on what's happened in the last year. So, uh, Argo was, was incubated at a startup called uh, Applatix uh, about two and a half years ago now. Uh, and fairly shortly thereafter, they were acquired by, by Intuit to build a internal self-service cloud native platform for service delivery and for the developer community. As that uh, platform was being built, um, there was a need that was realized that we needed some uh, continuous delivery tool, and that's how Argo CD was was born. Uh, just a few months after after that, uh, BlackRock, who was a a fairly long term, uh, long time work Argo workflow user, uh, submitted Argo events to the to the project. And then uh, another couple of months later, Argo CD rolled out in production at Intuit. Um, as we used Argo CD internally, we also came to the realization that we needed some way of, of doing progressive delivery, doing some canary and, and blue-green testing, um, and, and hence Argo rollouts was, was incubated and launched uh, a few months later. Um, and then in April last year, almost exactly a year ago, um, we were accepted as an incubated CNCF project. And one of the, the big mi milestones that has happened since then was the the formation of an Argo bootstrap uh, committee. So this is a committee of a number of, of contributors uh, and, and companies that have helped with, with Argo and are tasked with, with working with the, with the community and making proposals and, and guiding the governance of the, the Argo project. And this is a very active committee, uh, meets every week uh, to discuss how to move Argo forward and, and grow the community. Um, feel free to jump in anytime if you have any, any questions. So, so this is uh, 
a, a view of the number of GitHub stars, not a, not a necessarily a true representation of the of the adoption, but it's it's at least something to give an idea on on how much the project has grow, grown in the last year. So if you look at the, the dotted line, that's incubation less than a year ago. Uh, Argo workflows um, now is 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 nearing eight thousand stars. They've added fifty percent stars just in in less than a year, and Argo CD has almost doubled the number of stars since incubation in in, in just in just a year. Um, and that was something that was mentioned in incubation as well that CNCF wanted to see CD uh, grow as well since Argo workflow was was the was the the, the main project. Back then, largest project, and and now a year later, we can see that Argo CD is is, is really is really taking off as well. So so together, we have uh, fifteen thousand stars in the project, three thousand forks, and looking at the dev stats on um, CNCF, we're up to three thousand eight hundred contributors contributors in total, of which just over nine hundred are are actually contributing code to the project. And we have a couple of very active Slack channels with a total of five thousand. Members that have also seen um, very good growth in the, in the last in the last year, and 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 just on Argo CD, um, we've seen the the contributors grow very strongly as well. And and on on GitHub, we actually now have more contributors on Argo CD than we do on on Workflow. They're pretty even, but but Argo CD is, is seeing a large influx of of con contributors. There. Are, Evenly spread across vendors, users, and, and individuals, it's good to see you know a mix of, of con various contributors coming in here as well. And we're seeing a strong growth of contributors and members outside of, of Intuit. I think last week um, there was there was a maintainers meeting, and I think that 12, 12 new members, were, core members, were accepted into the project, and two promotions. And of those fourteen new members and two promotions, I think there was only one new member, one promotion that came from into it. So we're seeing a lot of contributors come into the projects from from outside, from outside, uh, from outside into it. We've also done 350 releases in the project in inception, uh, and that is um, twice the amount since incubation. At incubation, I think we're at 147. So in the last year, even though Argo has been around for now two and a half years. We've doubled the number of releases in the in the last year, so pretty pretty good release cadence, releasing uh, releasing a lot and releasing fast. Um, of course, we've also added a, a large number of, of new users. Um, we have over two hundred official public references um, now. I think they're two hundred and fifty ish in total. Two hundred unique companies. So we have some around forty or fifty of the companies that have self-reported that are using more than than one Argo project. And we've seen some of the some of the new notable ones uh, that we've seen here lately. Uh, Nikki from Japan, who publishes uh, the world's largest business uh, daily and uh, Financial Times uh, based in London. Uh, we've seen New Rally Consumer Logic here from the US, Swisscom, uh, European Telecos, Electronic Arts. And, and as of yesterday, I think, uh, also have PayPal uh, reporting that they they rolling out Argo rollouts. So a lot of new users, a um, lot of various verticals spread across the world. So really good good mix of usage and users uh, across the various projects. Uh, but in in addition to all the users, we've also seen a lot of integrations with Argo as a component, where we have projects that have been around for a while, like Kubeflow and and SQL Flow and Selden. Are using Argo workflows as an orchestration engine underneath. Um, we have Cooler, uh, a little more recent, which is a unified interface for, for managing workflows with different workflow engines that also support uh, Argo. And, and then fairly recently, we also have the uh, developer portal platform Backstage, now also supporting uh, Argo role as we can, for uh, progressive delivery in, in on that platform. Uh, and then in, in addition to the open source project, uh, there was also an announcement by, by Red Hat a, a couple of weeks ago about the GitOps uh, agent, uh, sorry, the GitOps operator that they're releasing that, that, that uses Argo CD. So we're excited to, to get a you know, fully supported vendor solution here with Argo as well. And, and on the vendor side, 
in addition to that, we also have a number of, of vendors that have integrations either listed on the website or, or integrations with Argo that they support. For example, there's CodeFresh that's taken a, a, a more active role in the Argo community as well and, and helping out and co contributing it, uh, a lot. And then we have more passive, more passive uh, like, like VMware and DigitalOcean that still have Argo integrations documented on their in their official documentation, but not, not necessarily being too involved in the project. So, so overall, it, it, it's been a great year. Lots of, lots of interest, lots of growth, uh, not just in contribution, but also in, in the usage across, across the world. Uh, we've also seen a lot of, a lot of chatter uh, on, on Twitter, uh, on Slack. Um, and that's how we know that the, this, a, the actual number of users is, is quite a lot larger than the 200 that, that, that officially support. Because you know that the number of companies that aren't allowed to you know, officially um, proclaim what, what, what they're using internally. But we've seen, we've seen users that, that aren't listed uh, with companies in, in the users file to, that, that post on, on Twitter, how excited they are about the project. We've seen people post about training they're doing uh, meetups and, and webinars, and it's also really exciting to see some more local meetups and, and local presentation. I think just in the last couple of weeks, I've seen meetups and presentations in Spanish and, and Japanese and in Argos. It's, it's good to see, you know, how, how it's spreading spreading around around the world. But in general, there's a lot of just great positivity around Argo, and, and not just Argo itself, but also around around GitOps. Uh, and it, it seems like the the audience is, is maturing. Um, I can tell that the community and the users are maturing. There are less questions around what is Argo and, 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 and what is GitOps. People, people get it now, users get it. There's more real use cases. How do, how do I take these, how do I take these components, how do I take these projects and how do I, how do I apply them in my, in my situation? They understand, they understand what, what it is, they understand what they want to do, they understand where they want to go and they're more just curious to figure out some best practices on, on, on getting there. Uh, we also, I also mentioned uh, the user surveys. So in, in February, we ran user surveys for the Argo projects. Uh, and we got about 120 or so unique responses across the surveys. Um, and though the, the, there is a little bit of, of selection bias, of course, since, since, since these were solicited from you know, from from the, the current Argo users, the the resulting NPS scores came in at you know, 68 and 66 respectively for CD and workflow. So even what, with some selection bias, those those are some pretty incredible uh, and some incredible NPS NPS data. Uh, and you know, as, as in my in my previous life as a vendor, even with some selection bias, and I would be incredibly proud over over those. And and equally here, you know, the, those are some pretty impressive numbers that show how excited uh, the users are um, and how happy they are with, with what has been done by the community so far. It showed there was a pretty good mix of, of experience level and use cases in the community. Um, it's not, uh, it's, it's a good mix of, of vet seasoned veterans and, and new users, some that have just put Argo in production, some that have run Argo in production for a long time and uh, almost 90% of the people that responded are using it in production. So it's, so it's not that there's a lot of science projects going on here, that these are actually users and companies using Argo in production. And like I said earlier, about 25% use more than one Argo project all, already. And, and what's, what's, what's almost even more exciting than the NPS scores and the reflection of, of the NPS score is that almost 50% of the people that responded said that they were willing to, to share what they're using Argo for, evangelize Argo, and do case studies, provide quotes, or write some blog posts to do, do, do some uh, presentations on Argo. And, and that's another good testament to you know, how, how, uh, how excited the, the user community is and how confident they, they are with, with, with Argo. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll pause to see if it, were there any questions so far? Otherwise, there's something on 
any questions on chat? Uh, there were a few expressions on chat, no questions. Yeah, no expressions, no questions. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll keep going. And like I said, feel free to interrupt if, if, you, have, if you have any questions. Um, the, the four projects we have um, released independently, there is just an, a, a timeline of when the, the releases so far uh, that we've, we've had. We're not on a fixed fixed cadence, um, but like I said, it's been pretty regular, been pretty hectic with the 350 releases uh, in total and with three, 350 releases from, uh, 350 releases from the start of which almost half is, is from around here. Uh, so it's been a, a, a very intense release cadence here in, in, the, last, in the last year, but even, even so, uh, we haven't had any major releases since incubation. So, so I'm, I'm very excited to announce, and some of you might have already seen that, that we're aiming to have major releases of Argo workflows, Argo CD, and Argo rollouts here in the next in the next month or so. Um, so we'll get up to the first 1.0 release of Argo workflows. We'll rev Argo CD to 2.0 and Argo workflows to to 3.0. So there's a lot of good stuff coming in here. Argo workflows has a brand new UI. There's integration, better integration, more integration with, with, with Argo events that's frequently used together with Argo workflows. Um, there's more enterprise grade functionality like controller high availability, um, making sure that we reduce the time in, in case something happens to the controller. Uh, we don't have to wait for Kubernetes to start up the new pod. We can just do a hot swap and, and get up and back up and running faster. Uh, and in Argo CD, there's also been a lot of new cool UI work. Uh, the log visualization has been rewritten and, and improved to make sure that it's easy to troubleshoot and figure out what's, what's, what's going on with, with your deployments. Uh, we've also uh, found and fixed a, a number of security issues in, in Argo CD. Um, and there's also now a Argo proj security advisory page, page on GitHub where you can go and see, you know, any, uh, and, and subscribe and see any, anything, anything that we find, anything that gets, gets fixed. And then last but not least, uh, getting Argo rollouts to 1.0. I'll show that in a little bit. We've started rolling it out internally at, at Intuit and, and we'll do more rollouts at, at Intuit later this year. Uh, but based, based on our experiences, based on what we've seen from the community and heard from the users, it's, it's time to get it up to, to 1.0. Um, so one of the things that we uh, also have done for the gra graduation is a security review. Uh, and we completed two phases uh, with Trail of Bits, um, which is a company that CNCF contracts with to do security reviews. So we completed that uh, last week and they did basically two different two phases, a threat model, which is more higher level component focused uh, review where they go into design and architecture actors and just try and, and see and, and evaluate if there are any, any issues in, in the modeling um, and the architecture of the product. And then the second phase was a, a code review more focused on using static analysis tools and manual uh, review of code to really drill in and, and see, you know, what's what's going on and, and see what's what potentially could be could be an issue. Uh, so the the threat model found 22 issues ranging from uh, informal to high, and the code review found 35 issues from informal to medium, which, uh, given the size of the project, is, is 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 a really good result. Most of the issues are low or informational, meaning that they're things that we just need to document, something we, to report, maybe maybe switch to, I think there's one, for example, it was we're using a, a Redis version, that was a couple of versions old. So, so just fairly small, fairly small things. The, uh, the, the really good news is that we, there were no critical issues found, which is the, the graduation criteria to, to meet. But even so, uh, a number of these issues are already being triaged. Some of them have already been fixed even. Uh, so we're triaging and prioritizing this to, to, to get as many as possible these fixed here quickly uh, and include in the, 
in the upcoming releases. And even the ones wow, that sorry, are made. Was this, this one attending, was this done across all major Argo projects? So for rollout, CD, workflows, and events? Yes, so this is really across. Amazing. Yeah, so this is across all of Argo, so all four. I, I rolled them up instead of breaking them out when we have the report and, and we'll share that as part of the graduation process. But this is, this is an aggregation across uh, all four. And, and even so for, for the medium and, and high issues that were found, uh, the vast majority of these were also uh, rated with a high difficulty, which means that even, even if the, there's a medium or high impact, the ability to, to actually ex exploit these um, would be very tricky and very hard. Um, and another thing that we've been working on to, to, to make the project you know, easy to use and more polished is a new website design and content. Uh, content. So a shout out to, to Codefresh that has, has helped a lot in, in, in getting this going. So currently the, the four projects have slightly different website. The, the information is, is, is scattered slightly differently and um, they have slightly varying degree of, of maturity of the content. So, so we're, we're building a, a new website that's gonna be more streamlined uh, consolidate and coordinate the, the information across the project, streamline documentation, making sure there are you know, getting started guides that, that, that are, are similar across the project so people can get started, not just with a single one, but get started with all since we see that as a more, more common use case. And also making it a little bit more polished, making sure that we take advantage of, of all the users that are excited to provide quotes and, and case studies and, and, and data on the usage and, and make it more of a, you know, a, a product than, than, than project feel here and, and making sure that people can find the information they need quickly, no matter which pro project it is and, and getting information on other, other use cases, other users using it and, and uh, make sure that, that you know, everything looks like, like a coherent, coherent project across all the four, the four sub projects. Um, and I think I have, I'm re nearing the end here. I just wanted to, to highlight a little bit. Uh, Intuit is still one, uh, if not the largest user of, of uh, Argo, and we've grown quite a lot since incubation. As you can see here, the number of applications uh, that we have deployed at Intuit was about 4,000 at incubation, and now we're, we're over 11,000, almost tripled the, the number of, of applications. Um, and we now have 5,000 developers onboarded onto, onto this platform.